Praise the Lord, everybody. I just want to sing this song right quick because I have a testimony after this. I don't know what was going on. Pressure was in my head. And as the praise team was singing Jesus, and as I kept on saying Jesus, Jesus, the pain went away. Because the whole day I was suffering with the pain. And I thank God for being a healer on tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all may be seated. today I want to tell another testimony um, this past week has been very stressful because um, I'm a student full-time student and school is really stressful and um, I didn't know how I was going to prepare for this message and do all of my finals because I had seven finals and so it was a lot on my mind and I was asking God Lord could you help me please prepare for this night and also my finals and I want to thank God for helping me pass all of my finals on this week so yes. I'm officially a sophomore now, so I thank God for helping me. Amen. And I want to tell one more testimony. Wait, before I tell another testimony, I want to thank God for my parents. They have been helping me throughout my entire life, so I thank God for them. Thank God for my brothers and sisters. They somewhere out there. It's a lot of us. But I thank God for y'all. I can't see. And I also want to thank God for my tabernacle family. I thank God for you all. And I thank God for everybody who's here on tonight. And so before I accepted my call, I never realized how much fear I was living in. Fear stopped me for a long time from doing what God was calling me to do. And there's a song someone sent me one day that says, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. Fear can really enslave us. Fear can really enslave us because for so long, I really didn't know what God was calling me to do. I always thought about how I would feel. I always thought about what other people thought about me, and I never really thought about what God had for me. I thought I was inadequate. I thought I wasn't ready, and I thought this would be out of my comfort zone. I'm like, Lord, I don't like talking in front of people, so being up here tonight is out of my comfort zone, but I thank God for the strength to be up here, and because I was so caught up in myself, I never realized how much um, anguish I was calling myself in my life. And because I was so self-centered by being disobedient to God, by being so consumed in how I would look rather than obeying God, I never really thought about all the souls who were dying because of my disobedience to God. 
But I remember if you are truly a follower of Christ, then the things that concern God should also concern you. And so instead of thinking I was unworthy, unprepared, and unfit for being called by God, I realized that there are so many people that are connected to my life. And I had to realize that if I give up, I'm not only giving up on, on myself, but also thousands of generations. And because when you give up, you not only give up on yourself. And I had to realize it's not about me. Everything is not about you. In so many instances, we can be so caught up in ourselves that we forget the people who are connected to our lives. There are so many people waiting on you to reach them, waiting on you to love them and tell them about God's salvation. There are so many people who feel unloved and unwanted. And if only we were not fearful, then we would be able to reach those individuals. Because we're so caught up in ourselves, we can cause ourselves to become stagnant in our walk with Christ. And for a while, I was stagnant in my, in my walk with Christ. When it, comes to God, when it comes to God, we become stagnant, fearful, and want to know every single detail. We need to realize how many people are waiting on you. So if we are truly saved and committed to God, we should be in full effect. We shouldn't be stagnant waiting on missionary so-and-so to do it or the pastor to, to do it. Because at the end of the day, all of us have a set pe people to reach. And if you're not reaching them, then you're causing them to suffer. And so today is the day that I'm letting it be fully known that I'm committing my life to God. That I'm committing to his work no matter how much fear comes into my life. And I pray that you will recognize who you need to reach and reach them also. You don't need to know all the details because if you knew all the details, then you would be God. But we're not God. And it's just for you to be obedient to God, not for you to know everything. If I were to ask my parents every day what, why, sh why I should do what they tell me to do, then in a way I'll be disobedient. And if I can trust them, I should be more than willing to trust God in this. So I thank God on today for letting me be able to share his word. Amen. That's my testimony. Okay. Now we're going to get to the word. As I was seeking God to show me what to say, he led me to this passage. And at first I was like, God, are you sure this is what you want me to talk about? Because I had a whole different message in my head. But throughout these few nights, I've been attentive to the past few messages, and they were confirmation of what I needed to say tonight. So we're going to look at the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. It was written by King Solomon and a few others. Tonight we're going to look at Proverbs 1, verse 22 to 33. Y'all there say amen so I can make sure y'all. <laughs> How long will you simple ones love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. Because you disdained all of my counsel and would have none of my rebuke, I will la also laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when terror comes. When terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear. Amen. So verse 2 starts off with a very interesting question. How long will you simple ones love simplicity? Now, to understand, you need to know that simplicity means foolishness, being open-minded to anything. How long are you going to be open-minded to anything in your life? So many of us are suffering with a lot of things because we're open-minded to what everybody else has to say, to what everybody else is talking about. But God is telling us that we shouldn't be open-minded as people of God. How long are you going to be open-minded to demonic influences over your life? 
How long will you be open-minded to everyone and anyone coming into your life? How long will you allow yourself to be open-minded to certain lifestyles? You need to watch the people you let in your life. Too many times we're trying to live a certain way. We're trying to um, expect people around us who aren't saved. We try to let them direct us. But if you're trying to live saved, you can't surround yourself around those influences. One way or another, they'll convert you to their way. That's why 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 warns us not to be unequally yoked. And so further in 22, verse 22, it talks about scorners delighting in their scorning. Firstly, I want to define the word scorner. Scorner comes from the Hebrew word lutz. Scorner refuse, scorners refuse to learn from rebukes or mistakes. They keep doing the same ludicrous things repeatedly. We can see that in Proverbs 13 verse 1. Y'all can write these um, scriptures down because I'm not going to read them. I know y'all brought notes, as my dad would say, to write down. Y'all see? Okay. <laughs> Scorners may seek wisdom but cannot find it. One reason they cannot find wisdom is that they are already convinced in their own opinion. We cannot grow wise if we won't learn from the wise. We can see that in Proverbs 14, verse 6. Scorners are the source of strife and contention. When we get rid of the scornful, we have peace. We can see that in Proverbs 22, verse 10. Scorners resent correction. Scorners are arrogant and haughty. We can see that in Proverbs 21, verse 24, which keeps them at odds with God. In James 4 and 6, God says, resist, God will resist the proud, but give grace to the humble. And so we can see in verse 22 to 25, it's too often that we, be, we can be accustomed to a certain way of thinking. My favorite subject is biology. And as I study about the body, it's so intricate. I find the brain to be one of the most fascinating parts of the body. Here are some facts about the body. Here are some facts about the brain, sorry, your mind. Your brain storage capacity is considered virtually unlimited. Human beings, human brains have enough memory to store the entire internet. On average, it takes 66 days for a new behavior to become automatic. I say all that to say because many of us have been so accustomed to a certain way of thinking. Since we, re since we can remember, we have been conditioned to thinking a certain way and rejecting anything else that we're not familiar with. By doing this, we set boundaries on ourselves and we set boundaries on God to bless us. For so many of us, we battle with unbelief. Some may not want to accept it, but subconsciously, you don't really believe that God can do the impossible. We may try to believe God for the things that we find beneficial to us, but when we look at ourselves, we only comply to what we truly want. Some of us are stuck in cycles because we're afraid to do what we don't want to do. We live in it, we've limited ourselves. As God continues to work in this revival, some of us can't move from dead situations because we're stuck in our old ways. Because of our unwillingness to obey God, we hinder our lives. But Romans 12 verse 1 warns us not to be conformed to this world's way of thinking. Because when you think like this world, you only hinder yourself and your understanding of God and what he has for your life. But if you were here Tuesday night, God spoke to us that he would renew our minds if only we, were true, if only we would truly believe. When I heard that, I, talk, I thought to myself, Lord, can you really teach me how to unlearn the things that I already know? But at that moment, I remembered a prayer my mom used to say. My, my mom all says it all the time. Lord, help my unbelief. If only we will let go of what we perceive that we know, then we can let God work through us and renew our minds. Throughout this consecration, we need to let God renew our minds. Verse 22 to, I'm going to read verse 27 to 31 again. When your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when anguish, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. 
why is it that we only call God when things in our life are going the wrong way? God doesn't hear from us when our money is right. He doesn't hear from, from us when our kids are acting right. He doesn't hear from us when we have everything, when we have everything that we need. But as soon as something happens, we immediately run to God, ask him to do everything in our lives. But we ourselves are not committed to him. We're prone to, act, we're prone to using God as a janitor. Once we make a mess in our lives, we want him to clean it up. So many times we can, be over, we can overlook how we live. And so this week, God has been dealing with me personally, showing me that we can overlook so many things in our lives. He showed me disobedience. And there's a quote by Edwin Cole that states, obedience is an act of faith. Disobedience is the result of unbelief. And yes, I know that disobedience can be overlooked in many instances, but God gave me a deeper understanding on it. And as I stated before in my testimony, I was disobedient to God. There were many times when I would speak to him, when he would speak to me in many ways. Sometimes he would warn me about situations, not to go over there or not to talk to this person or not to go that way. And because I thought I knew what was best for me, I disobeyed and listened to myself. And every time I would disobey, I caused so much anguish in my life. I've witnessed a lot of people blaming God for things in their life. But in reality, it was all their fault for their ways. Yes, God does chastise his people because he loves us. We can see that in Proverbs 3, verse 12. But everything that happens in your life is not God bringing punishment on you. A lot of times it's because of our disobedience. It's because of decisions we make every day. These things of this world are useless. In the end, they will have no value. You can see that in Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21. Wherever you're working towards endlessly, that's where your heart truly is. We work hard for our jobs. We work hard in school. We work hard for everything else. And we work hard even for other people. But when God asks us to do something, we disobey. We build other people's businesses rather than God's work. And our church, our church soul goal is 438,800 souls. And too often, we get so caught up in ourselves, we can't even reach one person a week. God has been dealing with me this week. Some of us are complaining that we're too busy. Too busy doing what? You're not always too busy to do God's work. If the things of this world are really no value to us, then why are we so committed to doing the to working hard to obtain them? And so many of us are scared to fully submit to God because with submission causes obedience, which causes you to give up your own will. Many times God tells us what to do and what not to do, yet we still disobey and do not do what he tells us. Many times we ruin our own lives by acting based on our wills because we are human, we think we are always right. The other day I heard a quote by Christian Boy Podcast. Shout out to Christian Boy Podcast. <laughs> it shocked me and opened my eyes. Um, but the quote was, the devil doesn't have to destroy you if he can distract you. And a lot of times we can be distracted doing nothing, doing things that bring no value to the kingdom of God. We dedicate our lives to worthlessness. We invest our time and effort to other people's work except for God's work. But Matthew 6 verse 21 says, for where your heart is, there will your heart be also. We've even been complaining about how long this revival is. Like, oh my goodness, we got to be here the whole month, 31 days straight. But in reality, we go to the mall every day. We go to um, work every day. We go other places every day. But when, it's, when it comes to God's house, we get lazy. We need to check ourselves. We need to ask ourselves, what truly has my heart? Verse 32 and verse 32 to 33 reads, For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear. On today, God is calling his people to heed his wisdom. A lot of us have trouble with getting out of our own wills. 
A lot of us are so caught up in one way of thinking that we reject everything else. You're repeatedly in a place of repetition, and you know that whatever you do is not working. Because of our unwillingness to obey God, to let go of our own wills, and to believe, we hinder our own lives. You can try everything in this world. You can try sex. You can try you can try being famous, you can try drugs, you can try money, you can try alcohol, but in reality, life is empty without Jesus in your life. You can try getting into a relationship, but if your life, if you, were, if you weren't happy before you got into a relationship, what makes you think you'd be happy getting into one? Because people cannot make you happy. People cannot fill the void that is in your life if you don't give your life to Christ. Anyway, I digress because that's not what what I'm supposed to be talking about. But (laughs) the point is that when you are serious about living for God, when you make the conscious decision to first believe that he is God and he died and rose again for your sins, when you can be obedient to his voice and fully commit your life to him, then you experience true joy and peace in your life. There was a time in my life where I had no hope. I was depressed. I even, it was even a time in my life where I was suicidal, and I don't think anyone knew about that. But when I made the conscious decision to stop trying to live my life the way I wanted to, when I realized that I was trying to do, I was trying to do my own will, I was trying to do my own will and not God's will, it was not satisfying the hole I had in my life. When I made the decision to fully commit to God, everything changed for me. And now I have joy, I have peace, and I know I'm no longer bound by the fear in my life. And now that I know who I am in God, God enables me to be a better person. And I want to read um, Matthew 7, verse 13 to 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Broad is the way to that leads to destruction, but narrow is the gate that leads to life. So many people don't follow God because it's hard, that, and they're afraid of letting go of their ways. Yes, it's hard to follow God. It's hard to obey him. It's hard being nice to people who despitefully use you. It's hard loving on people who don't love you back. It's hard giving to people who don't want to receive your gifts. But one thing I know is that in the end, all the hardship will not be worthy and will not be compared to the glory that God will reveal to us. We have to get in our hearts that nothing is going to be easy. Too many people want stuff to come easily to them. No one wants to work for anything. But to get something valuable, you need to work for it. Nothing good comes easy. And I want to read James 1, verse 5 through 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You cannot expect to receive anything from the Lord with unbelief. All of us here lack wisdom. It don't matter who you are, where you came from. All of us lack wisdom from God. All of us here lack something tonight. It may be peace, it may be joy, it may be healing, it may be love. And God is such a merciful God that he gives all of us liberally and without reproach. But if you're in doubt, you're considered to be a double-minded man. And God is waiting for you with open arms. And if only we would accept his wisdom and walk in what he has for us without rejecting it, he can move like ever before in your lives. And I was going to be very long, but God told me to end this and um, pray because I believe that God is going to do something on tonight. 
he's been, um, as I've been praying and fasting and seeking God, he told me to uh, bring everyone in, on, on, on the altar. And as we seek God, I believe that he will change your mind. He will renew your mind because so many times we're stuck in a place and we can't get out. We try everything. We try anything. But God is saying tonight, let go of that. It will not free you. It will not help you. You can try anything in this world, but it will not fill that void in your life. It will never fill that void. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that you listened to the message. Thank you for listening to the message. God's word is powerful. And I want to invite you, no matter where you're from, we have people in this church from everywhere. People come and travel and people, some have even moved to this area. I want to invite you to come join us at Tabernacle South Haven. We're at 7701 US 51 in South Haven, Mississippi. I pray that you'll be with us and I want to continue to pray for you. We want to continue to be in touch with you. God bless you. Thank you. And hope you subscribe, hope you press that bell and like it so you get notifications when we drop other messages that will bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much.